we have been talking about the Bible. Today, by the grace of God, we want to talk about practical. We want to talk about practicing biblical meditation. Remember what we said, we are talking about biblical meditation. There is a biblical way to meditate. Nowadays, you will hear a lot of things, particularly in Western where people talk about mindfulness. So there's a secular way people meditate, but it's all about finding peace, finding answers in ourselves but that is not biblical meditation that is secular meditation it may have some little bit of advantage okay people do get some advantage from secular form of meditation but that is far far inferior to biblical meditation what still is the demonic uh, meditation that we see in eastern religion yoga and things like that we are talking about biblical meditation there is a biblical way to meditate and that is what we've been talking about and we said so many things before we move on let's read psalm 77 11 to 13 i will remember the works of the lord surely i will remember thy wonders i will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings thy way O god is in the sanctuary who is so great a god as our God. One of the things we saw in David is that he was a man that understood the secret and the importance of meditation. He said, he remember the works of the Lord. Number two, he said, he remember his wonders. Number three, he said, I will meditate also of all thy work. And he said in meditation, I will talk of thy doing. And then he was talking about God's greatness right let's read psalm 63 verses 5 and 6 my soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when i remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches he said i meditate on thee i meditate on thee in the night watches and because of that he said my soul will be satisfied and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. This is a, a very important way we connect with God. We connect with the Bible. This is an important and meaningful way we connect with the Bible. And through that, we connect with the person, the purpose, the power of God. And this is very, very important. So we're not going to go back to do review. The question before us is, so how do we meditate? How do we meditate biblically? And how do we do it right? And that is that is what we'll be building up to. And we said a lot of things. The other time we we're talking about various words that were used for meditation. We talk about benefits of meditation. We talk about things that are associated with meditation, reading the word of God, studying it, singing it, writing it. We've done all those things. We've also differentiated between the secular way of meditating, the demonic way of meditating, and the biblical way of meditation. So we really, really want to look at how do we meditate biblically, practically, way and how do we do it right but for us to answer this question we have to look at meditation from three angles I mean we've already looked at it at one angle already so going on the second angle is actually where I'm going to bring in a few number of practical things so three angle we want to look at meditation as you can see there we want to look at meditation as chewing or as eating and we've already done that. We've looked in previous teaching. We've looked at two illustrations of meditation. Meditation as eating or feeding or chewing. And we've looked at meditation as a medicine. But here we are looking at the process. So in talking about practical way to, 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 to practice biblical meditation, we have to look at meditation as chewing. We have to look at meditation as analyzing. And we have to look at meditation as action. Meditation as chewing. Meditation as analyzing and meditation as action. In talking about meditation as food, as drink, we have looked at it as chewing. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. We compare it to chewing. We look at the way some animals do. They will eat the cord, they will eat the grass, they will swallow it. Then they will push it back again and chew it and chew it and chew it and chew it before for digestion before they swallow it again. And we've looked at the process of cooking, the process of digestion, and I'm not going to go deeply into all that again. This illustration of chewing actually shows us some of the practical way 
that we can meditate but we've done a lot of this so i'm not going to spend too much time on this so what we are going to do today is to actually go into the second one and that is what we want to do we want to look at meditation as analyzing but before we do that there are a couple of things i just want to quickly talk about that will help us to be able to key in again going back and building more foundation to what we have said before we look at analyzing let's remind ourselves of something now we did say that to meditate is to muse to meditate is to muse what do we say musing is to muse is to actually to think to muse is to spend time in solitude and to think you know in english when we want to when we have a word and we want to convert it to an opposite word there are a couple of ways we do it in english sometimes we can add a to it for example typical the opposite will be atypical sometimes we add a b normal abnormal sometimes we add i mother e motor so the reason i'm saying that is look at this if we put a in front of muse what do we have we have a muse and it's unfortunate today that many, many people go to the church not to muse on God, like we read in the psalmist, not to muse on the person, the wonders, the work of God, His power and the glory. Many people, unfortunately, go into the church today because they want to be amused. Now, there's nothing wrong by itself in amusement, but the problem oftentimes is that oftentimes these are the things that actually take our attention and our affection away from spending time in musing upon the person and the purpose of God. You know, sport and games and TV and internet, Facebook, we can use it for God, but if we are not careful, these are tools that the enemy can actually use to take our attention, to take our function away because we use all our energy, we use all our time on amusement such that we don't have enough time and enough strength to spend in meditating, in musing upon the Lord. And this is why I wanted to bring this out to us today amusement the primary purpose of going to the sanctuary is not to be amused but rather to muse upon the person and the purpose of god in psalm 77 that we read earlier on verses 11 to 13 he said i will remember the work of the lord i will remember thy wonders of old i will meditate also on all your works and talk of thy doings thy way O god is in the sanctuary who is so great uh, a god as our god what we engage ourselves with in the sanctuary of God is not amusement, but to muse upon the Lord, to meditate upon Him, to think upon His wonders, to think upon His word, to think upon His power. And that is the reason why we go into the house of the Lord. We go there to consider, just like the psalmist says. So in biblical meditation, the focus on biblical meditation is not ourselves. We are not there to be entertained. We are not there to be struck on the head. We are not there to ponder to our own ego. We are there to focus on God. The focus of biblical meditation is not self-amusement, but the practice of reflection and focusing upon the Lord. The center of biblical meditation is not self-enlightenment. It's not self aggrandizement but it is God's alignment the reason why we have come is to honor God is to magnify him is to behold his beauty is to inquire in his temple is to meditate upon his person upon his power it's not for self amusement it's not for self enlightenment but for God's alignment but that we may reflect and focus upon God. Biblical meditation is focusing on God through contemplation on his word. When we meditate, we quiet our heart before the scripture and this leads us into a deeper intimacy, into fellowship with God and intimacy with Christ. Now, when we meditate, we are intentional, we are deliberate in directing and focusing our thought on God, in directing and focusing our thought on on his word and remember him remember who god is remember you know his wonders remember his work remember the things that god has done for us in the past i'm going to read these two quotations from 
two men of God that has been of immense blessing to my heart personally. One is J.I. Parker from a book he wrote called Knowing God. He said, meditation is the activity of calling to mind and thinking over and dwelling on and applying to oneself the various things that one knows about the works and about the ways and the purposes and the promises of God. It is an activity of holy thought, consciously performed in the presence of God, under the eyes of God, by the help of God, as a means of communion with God. Meditation is the activity of calling to our mind and thinking over and dwelling on and applying to oneself the various things that one knows about the works and the ways and the purposes and the promises of God. And Andrew Murray, Andrew Murray said meditation is holding the word of God in our heart until it affected every phase of our life. And this is what we do in meditation. We are not here to be amused. We are not here to be entertained. We are here to muse, to think, as we read here, to hold the word of God to our heart until it has affected every phase of our heart. So it's not about amusement. No, it's about musing. It's about meditating. It's about focusing upon the word of God. In biblical meditation, we remember the Lord in all his glory and ponder upon him in his fullness. As we meditate rightly, what happens is that it leads us to worship. It leads us to prayer. It leads us to praise. As we remember the Lord in all his glory and ponder upon him, what happens is that we begin to lead us to wonder and awe and worship. Biblical meditation and prayer goes hand in hand. As we meditate upon the word of God, we are filled with God's truth and the result of that is prayer. This is what made David to be a man after God's own heart because he was a man of meditation and he was a man of worship and he was a man of praise and he was a man of prayer because as we meditate upon the person and the glory and the goodness and the power and the grace and the mercy of God, we are filled with awe. We are filled with wonders and we begin to worship. We begin to praise and we begin to pray. So there is that connection between meditation and prayer, it goes on in and meditation fills us with God's truth and prayer is the overflow. J.I. Parker says that meditation is the practice of turning each truth we learn about God into matter of reflection. So every truth we learn, every truth of the word of God becomes a matter of meditation. And as we do that, we are inevitably drawn into the place of prayer and into the place of praise. Maybe the reason why our worship and our praise and our prayer is not as vibrant as they should be or are not as powerful as it should be. Maybe the reason why we are not encountering God as we should is because we've not been meditating biblically as we should. I mean, look into the Old Testament. We all read stories upon story. The, the children of Israel going around the wall of Jericho seven times, you know, and they blow the trumpet, they shout, and the wall came down. We read the story of Jehoshaphat, okay, and they sang, they appointed, you know, singers and they sang the mercy the glory of god and they have great deliverance what about about paul and silas when they were in prison they pray and they sang and the power of god was there but the truth is that sometimes we sing and it's hollow sometimes we praise and it's hollow maybe the reason is because we've not spent time to behold the glory of god in the face of the lord jesus christ maybe if you and i spend more time meditating. Obviously, we talk about meditation, sit, sit upon the shoulder of praise. I mean, upon the shoulder of reading, upon the prayer of studying, upon the prayer of memorizing scripture. As we meditate upon the word of God, we meditate upon God in his word. We begin to see the, the glory of God. We begin to stand in awe of him. We begin to stand in, 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 in appreciation of him. We begin to stand in wonder of him. And we begin to move into the place of praise and worship and into the place of prayer. So I will read what G.I. Parker says once again. He says that meditation is the practice of turning each truth we learn about God into matter of reflection before God and this leads us to the place of prayer and praise to 
God. So let's go back before we round up. Let's let's begin to look at meditation as analyzing. What do we do when we analyze? In meditation, we think over a passage piece by piece, and we're talking about meditation as analyzing. What we do in meditation is that we take a passage of the scripture. We are not studying books. We are not studying chapters. We are, we are, in fact, we are studying verses, but even that verse, what we are doing is that we take that verse and we take it piece by piece. We break it apart and dwell on each word and each line of scripture. Oftentimes when we meditate, we meditate on few words, a phrase, a truth that God quickens to our heart, maybe as we are reading the scripture, maybe as we are studying the scripture, maybe as we are hearing the message, and that is what we meditate upon. So in analyzing, in meditation, as analyzing, number one, we emphasize, number two, we paraphrase, and number three, we ask questions. Now, this is the three things we do in meditation. Okay, I'm using analyzing as a tool by which we meditate. We have looked at it as showing, but we are looking at practical way by which we meditate. Now, I'm going to use Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and we are, we are going to meditate together. In the next few minutes that we have together, we are going to meditate together upon Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and we are going to use these three tools of analysis. Okay, remember we are meditating. We are not studying here. We are not reading here. We have we have been reading, we have been studying, we have been memorizing, we have been singing the word, but now we want to sit down, we want to meditate on Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says was in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. When we want to meditate, one of the things you want to do is in analyzing and meditating the scripture, the first thing is you want to emphasize each word in this sentence, each word in this verse, each word in this way. Remember, meditation is musing, is thinking. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So what you want to do is to focus on each word one by one. The first word is in. In. You know, when you are meditating, you want to focus on each word. Read, read each word very slowly, very deliberately. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So one of the most helpful way in approaching meditation is to emphasize each of those words within the verse. And as you vocalize it, as you speak those words and hear it yourself, what happens is that the Holy Spirit will echo that word back into your ears. You are hearing it, the Holy Spirit is echoing it into your heart. So what you want to do is to read the phrase aloud several times and striking and emphasizing each word one by one. So I'm going to read this and each time I read it, I'll be emphasizing each word differently. So the first one I emphasize, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in that time, I emphasize in. The second one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You get the you get the point now. You, you're reading this verse over and you, you are musing, you are thinking, but you are reading that verse, you are reading that phrase, or you are calling that verse to memory, and you, as you read, you are focusing on each word individually. You, you get the book, and it, you go on and on to the last one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the us. Remember what we are doing here. We are doing the first one. Okay, we are meditating by analyzing. We've done meditating by showing. We are and these all these things overlap. We are emphasizing. You are musing, and 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 you read those things aloud. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. If you are in a place where you can read it aloud, read it aloud. If you are in a place where you cannot read it, just read it aloud in your heart. Muse it to yourself in the beginning, and you are. You are focusing, you are focusing on each word in the beginning. God created. And as you focus and emphasize each word, you focus your whole being, every cell. Let every cell in your body hear that word. Hear it. Don't just skim through the surface. Hear each and every one of those words. Let it reverberate through your being. Let the meaning strike you. Don't let it just run off your back. 
in the beginning God. See the word, feel the word, hear the word, taste the word. Let it hit you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And as you do that, remember you are not studying. Okay, you are just allowing it. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, and you are just reading that word back to yourself. Now, I'm going to stop it here today. Obviously, that is going to tie in with the second one, which is paraphrase. And the third one, which is ask question. So when we come back the next time, by the grace of God, we are going to move on to the second and to the third, we are teaching ourselves how to practically meditate upon the Word of God. But what I want you to do before the next teaching by the word, by the grace of God is, as you read the Scripture, as you hear the messages, as you as you as you study the Bible, when God quicken quite a number of a few verses, you know, to your heart, meditate. Take those things, okay? Go back and use this tool of emphasis, this analytical tools of emphasis that we can use to meditate the Word of God. And oftentimes, we need to meditate the Word of God as it applies to our situation. But remember, it's not about you. Abraham believed that God is able. Sarah believed that God is faithful. It's all about God. It's all about God. God in my situation. God is able. God can. God will. God is powerful. And that is why in the scripture, when men of God, men of faith pray, they always call to mind who God is. So maybe you want to meditate on the names of God. Jehovah, the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, I shall not want. Don't just let it run off you. Take that verse and meditate upon it day and night. Emphasize each word. The Lord is my shepherd. Read that phrase over and over again. And every time you go through it, emphasize each word differently. Differently. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my and emphasize, touch, feel each one of those words. Let it hit you. Let it speak to you. Let it refresh you. Let, hear it afresh. Write it down. Put it somewhere you can see it all the time so that you can call that word to mind throughout the day. Praise the Lord. And if you are listening to me and you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to. The time is short. There is no other name given among men where we can be saved. The name of Jesus has been given. God loves you. And God loves you, has given you the best that he has, but you have to receive him. So I'm praying and I'm admonishing and I'm asking you today, don't waste any minute or second longer. You can bow down your head now and repent of your rebellion and sin. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Invite him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. He will come in, he will save you, and he will be your father. He will be your friend. And he will walk through this life with you, and you will live eternity with him. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you.